our rainbow pistol review build guide video. We got three printed parts. We've removed the supports and prepped them for assembly. All the hardware has been cut down, ready to go. We have the main plunger tube here is eight and a half inches long. We have our plunger rod also eight and a half inches. And we're using a half length of K25 spring, so five and a half inches. And see the cut for the um, catch notch is one and three quarters inches um, from the front. And those are all the measurements that we need to do for now. And we can go ahead and jump right into assembly. We have the tools needed for this are just some drill bits that we'll explain later on and some marking jigs that I like to use to help get everything square and flush and everything nice and perpendicular. Put some lubricant um, to this tube and we'll go ahead and start with the handle. The handle will be uh, flush with the back. And so we're going to go ahead and mark where the holes are to attach the handle. So we'll go the rearmost hole, the middle hole, and the front hole. Try to get a fairly accurate approximation and usually really spot on. The clear tube helps so you can see where the holes will end up and that looks right on the money. And if you have a 3D printed marking jig, um, these are handy because they measure all of the um, basically 45 degrees all the way around it so you can measure the circumference really fast and it also helps with drilling your holes so they're directly across from each other and whatnot. And so I want to put the words on this PVC on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is going to use this jig. Um, you can 3D print. I'll put the file up on Thingiverse and you can mark your four is you can use a uh, PVC, which is a one quarter inch PVC coupler um, that you can just cut off a um, little bit of and you can use that as your marking jig, but you have to then mark it by hand, but then you can reuse it, and it's good for getting nice, smooth um, lines around the circumference. So you can just line it up, see the mark is right there, and then you can move it to the bottom, um, fairly accurate there. Or you can be smart and start on the bottom, but it's sometimes hard to get it correct right off the bat. All right, so we've marked the handle spots and they look nice. Actually, on this jig too, if you use the files for the rainbow pistol, um, the spacing for the first hole is actually in line with the middle of the marking jig. So if you want to just skip the step of having to guess where the holes need to go, you can go ahead and put it on the end, mark that, and kind of go from use it as a reference point. But we will mark that. We know where that is, and we will take these points and we want to copy them on the top side so we want the handle to be where the words are so get that centered on there it'll fit nice and tight and if your sharpie has a good enough tip you can actually stick it in that hole and mark it so we'll have one or you can just mark the top bottom so we'll have one here then on the opposite side will be the top side and we want to put these holes here so we can attach the handle from the top. And so you can either do it for all three, or what I do is I use a three-sided ruler so it sits nice on the blaster. The holes are in relation to the handle. Um, and mark that on the top side here. And there we go. And then again, with the moving the lines to the top, um, we can move these lines also to the very top surface here. So we can get the holes for our screwdriver to be able to attach the handle from the top. <laughs> which seems to be the quickest and easiest way to do it. So there we go. There's three holes on top, three holes on bottom for now. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to take our trigger and make sure it fits so we're gonna put these screws in if it's a little tight you might want to drill it out with it put the screw in uh, most of the way so it comes out one side just a little bit then we can put the trigger on that 
then it should sit on that screw. Then we'll just tighten it down, screw it in the rest of the way so it comes up the other side of the handle. And what I usually do is I use my power driver, but I can't seem to find the bit, so I don't know where they ended up. Maybe we'll use another bit here that I have later on. And there we go. So that'll slide freely. Really smooth action on that. As a reference point now for the catch. When you pull the trigger all the way, you should be able to see where it'll hit on the body. And so we can see that if the handle is flush at the bottom and the holes are lined up, and we pull the trigger, it'll push up right here. Double check that. And this is probably the most of the part. Maybe be a better way to do this later in the future. But yeah, that looks about right, right there. And then that'll be a hole for our catch screw screws or sheet metal screws for the handle. And then we'll use. 532 also for the center hole and then we'll use a large drill bit for the top holes but any size will work that'll fit the head of your screwdriver so if you have a uh, skinnier screwdriver you can use a smaller um, bit for the top holes which will give it a little bit of a nicer look depending on what you're going for but this will work just fine for our purposes and so we'll go ahead and drill those out now So on the bottom side, just one, two, three, four. It's pretty important to get these lined up um, as best you can, which is why we use the jig and the market. Um, that was not very good, but wider hole makes it uh, more, gives it more tolerance. So if you don't have your holes in the right and exact spot, you should still be okay. So these are nice clearance holes for these. And sometimes I actually use a tighter hole, but it doesn't really matter. So we'll clean that up a little bit. Okay. And then the holes for the top. the holes are not really clean you're going to want to clear those up a little bit deeper a little bit all right and then we will start assembling and again it should be a fairly good fit in here it might be a little tight And then that'll be our reference for the holes in the side as well. So we're going to mark that if this um, trigger is sitting right in that hole, nice and flush. Then we'll want our holes to hold the catch pieces in if this sits kind of on the front side. So when the spring is pushing against it, it'll be pushed towards the front of the blaster, which is towards me, we want to put the hole maybe a little bit more forward, or backwards, yes. That'll work. And then we'll again want to take that mark, move it around the circumference, specifically you want to make it to the two point catch. So we'll want to move it to either side. So 
sometimes it's jake and you can't tight you have to work it then we can mark on the left and the right side like that and we'll take this and so we've got this mark here one on the opposite side here. Yep. So we can either use 1 8 again or 5 30 seconds. I'm going to use, I'm just going to use 1 8 to see how it goes. Pretty simple, deeper of those holes. Now we can attach the cap. So we're going to take out the cap screw. And we're going to just slide it. This, this piece here is going to help keep the spring centered so it won't catch on the, the catch notch because without this little indent here, the spring will have a tendency to move up and down. And you can actually do a nice tight fit because tube. And then line that up to the holes on either side. You may need to get a smaller screwdriver and just make sure the holes are lined up or um, put the screw. In. And then that should line up with the catch on the bottom. And then we'll go ahead and put one half inch screws on either side. And this is where I'm going to use the power driver because it can be a pain for your hands to have to put these screws in and out. Go half inch. This is metal. We'd probably have to tap the holes because metal is less forgiving. But there you go. There is the main body. It looks pretty straight. And then that'll slide like this. Just slide. Nope. This is too big. Um, you're going to need to put washers to kind of make the head wider so you can attach the screw. Then we'll put this in the hole and line up the screw. Try to get the screw into the catch. Not too hard. There we go. So move up and down and we want to make it a little tighter. We want to tighten the screw down until the catch is just below the surface of the catch circles and you have enough tension on the spring um, and then at this point um, you can take off the marks we made and so we can uh, assemble the rest of the blaster or we can leave it be but if you want to take it off just use a little bit of rubbing alcohol and paper towel and it's really easy you just rub it off and then, um, if you want to have it if you want to an easy time getting it off um, take off the sharpie earlier rather than later or else it will get harder to remove get around the screw holes we did and there we go and we'll take off the front markings and function properly you should slide up and down like you saw earlier. Sometimes the most annoying piece of the puzzle to do and do right. But you want to make sure that catch will slide reliably. And if and because of the holes, just we're gonna redo this video for sure. But we can actually chuck this up to the end. Yep. 
Check that handle, you don't want that to not work when you're not. You get a pain in the butt to get in. And to get the rest of it in, you hold it upside down. I like to do the front one next. assembly there. Then all you need to do now is plunger head. Um, really simple. You want to use three quarters of the screw, the hole, nice tight fit. Screw it on. It's tight. O-ring. Lube it or lube the tube. I usually lube the tube because a little easier and it's easier to keep clean. Add it on. And this tube is a little tight on this o-ring because the clear tends to do that. I usually use skirt seals as why, but you still got plenty of low friction on it. And then you don't want to throw your screws around in your nuts. Attach it. I like to use a pair of pliers to hold the end while I use power driver to screw on this, this screw. There we go. Okay, we can prime it, test the catch. That's how smooth it is. But test the air seal. Pretty dang perfect. Catch works fine. All right, that's good. And now one other step is we we'll want to take something to hold the bushing in line with the blasters. It's loose in there. So what I usually do is I take packing tape, people use electrical tape, um, or just any sort of tape, but this is clear, so I like to use it. And it's not here to assemble. Test the fit. Yeah, that's nice. That's not wiggling anywhere. So you want to cut off the excess. Kind of cut it at an angle for the front so it'll slide in nice. Like a culinary art. We can slide in a lot easier. Look at that butter. Now one problem with this clear tube is it's actually more brittle than the color tube and so you don't want a lip on your front bushing. Um, that lip that sticks out will actually cause the PVC to have enough force on it when it bows out that it can actually split and crack and break your clear PVC. That happened to me twice now and I've learned since that tube a little more finicky. So this you just sand down the lip of the bushing. Now we know that it fits and everything is good. We will put on the front bushing. I like to, usually it seals just well um, on itself, especially if you get them of it just a tiny bit because you only try to fill those little gaps. All the way around. Beautiful. Then just slide that on. And if the rim is cut down right, you should be able to just push it on, push it up against something, push it on a table. And it should pop right on. Just push it over here and break the table. Something to cushion the plunger head from impacting that front bushing. Because it is 3D printed, and while I haven't had one break yet, it has been known to happen on other flashers but you go ahead and take a little bit of plunger pad this is from a caliburn i have these for sale also or you can use any craft foam but if you forget you can actually just push this in the front of the hole and you just sets in like that and you can actually just slowly lower the plunger onto that and it'll just stick right onto it 
There you go. Um, and then back to the front. Next thing you want to do is you want to just attach that because that is not a structural adhesive we just put on it. That is a plumber's sealant. So I can measure one side five eighths, one side seven eighths. I like to do five eighths on the front. And that will be for the screws to hold on the bushing. And you'll see in a second why I did 7 eighths and 5 eighths. 5 eighths is for the smaller of the two, and we'll use a 1 eighth inch drill bit. And this 1 eighth will mark to the depth we want to drill, because I don't want to have to drill all the way through, and potentially compromise the air seal, so about 3 eighths. Mark that. What I want to do is I want to drill the 5 8 hole 3 eighths of an inch deep. That'll be our dart stop so we don't accidentally vacuum load and get our dart stuck in the plunger tube. So we'll take two screws. I like to put a little bit of goop on these as well just to help them air seal just in case there is a little leak. Put the 3 8 on the top where the 5 8 inch hole was. And this is a 1 inch long screw. You can use 1 inch to, you can actually use 3 quarters inch I believe. And put that on the 7 8 depth hole. Or 7 8 hole. Switch back to a driver bit. Torque setting, kind of low, kind of high, depending on how big. <coughs> Excuse me. Think how big hole is, and just go for it. And then you got extra goop. Kind of put it on the side of the seam and kind of clean it up. There we go. And that is a pistol. Wait for that to dry and go ahead and shoot it. Super fun, guys. I mean, we could probably test the air seal now if we wanted to, but it's good. There you go. Then, last thing you'd want to do um, if your bolt's a little too long, you can cut that off, make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. But the whole thing is pretty nice. They pack a punch. And this is super smooth, the new design. Well, there's a assembly, quick assembly with a couple of um, things that I'm gonna have to edit. Half hour assembly, so not bad.